So here we're going to do a little practice with discrete probability distributions. We start with a random variable m. So we have a random variable m. Do that in plug. And we want to calculate the expected value in the variance. And you know the expected value for a discrete random variable is calculated as the sum of all possible m's of m times the probability of m. Now, that means we need to know what are all the possible outcomes. Here in this table, we are given a discrete probability distribution. Probabilities, we have outcomes 8, 9 and 10. And here are the respective probabilities, 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, of course, as they should for distribution, probability distribution, they sum to 1. So let's actually first calculate the expected value of uh, m. So what we need is the terms m times pm, and then we sum them all up. So let's write that here, m times pm. And so 8 times 0 0.4 is 3.2, 9 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.9, and 10 times 0 0.5 is this and if we add all of this up together we get 9.1 and that means our expected value is 9.1 for this variable. Now we also want to calculate the variance. Now the, a very convenient one version of writing the variance is like that. It's the expected value of m squared minus the expected value of m squared. Right? Note the difference here. Here the squares inside the expectations operator. So how do we calculate that first bit here? Again, we need to sum up over all outcomes of m. And what we sum up is m squared times px. And then we have minus the expected value of m squared. Now we already calculated that up here. I'm not going to repeat the formula, so I'll just have that here. So what we need is m squared times p of x. So let's calculate that here. m squared times p of, sorry, m not x. That is an m. p of m. You have to get used to seeing different letters and so do I. So 8 squared 64 times 0 0.4 is 25.4. Six. I didn't do that in my head, by the way. 9 squared times 0 0.1 is 8.1. That I can do in my head. And 10 squared times 0 0.5. 10 squared is 100 times 0 0.5 is 50. And when we add all of this together, we get 83.7. So that one here, that was the expected value of M. Now this one here is the expected value of m squared. Now if you want to calculate the variance, we take that term here, expected value of m squared, that is 83.7, and we subtract the expected value of m, which is this, 9.1, but that squared. If you calculate that, what you get is 0. Point, if I have that right, yeah, 8, 9. So, this was just an example of if you are given a discrete probability distribution, and let me just highlight that here, that is all of this information here. That was you being provided, oh, I apologize. Hang on, it was actually um, not that. Let me highlight it properly. It's this here, the outcomes and their probabilities. So if you're given that, then you can calculate the expected value and the variance. So let's learn or do a little bit of practice of how to calculate with expected values and, var and variances. So these are rules you just need to know when it comes to calculating with these things. So let's say you have a random variable you have a random variable x and what you know for that is some expected value of x and the variance of x. 
okay? And these were the rules you are then given. The expected value of a constant alpha plus x is the same as alpha plus the expected value of x. If you don't have an additive constant but a multiplicative constant, you can bring that outside of the expectations operator, just like you could bring the additive one outside. What about the variance? So the variance of a constant plus x is just the variance of x, because a constant doesn't contribute any variance. However, if you have a multiplicative constant, then you can bring that constant outside of the variance operator, but you have to square it. Okay. So let's see an application. So now we have a random variable called r. Again, you have to get used to seeing different random variables. And what we know about that random variable is the expected value, that's five, and the variance, that is three. So now we, let's think about a new random variable, q, which is a function of r. It is four plus r. Okay, so now you need to recognize that 4 here is just like this constant alpha. Okay, we're talking about these two cases here. So we've already identified which rule we need to apply. And now the question is, what is the expected value of Q? And what is the variance of Q? So the expected value of Q is the same as the expected value of 4 plus R. Now we are in this world here and we know we can bring that constant out. That's the same as 4 plus the expected value of r. The expected value of r is of course 5, so that's 4 plus 5, that is 9. What about the variance? So variance of q is the same as the variance of 4 plus r. So now we are talking about this case. The constant doesn't contribute anything to the variance, so that is the same as the variance of r, which of course we know to just be 3. So that was hopefully fairly straightforward. Now look at the second case, a new random variable set, which is now defined as 2 times r. So now perhaps you see that that 2, that factor, plays the role of that alpha in these relationships here, in the multiplicative relationships. So again, we want to know what the expected value of set is, our new random variable, which is a function of the uh, random variable r, and we don't want the expected value twice but we want the variance as well, the variance of set. So the expected value of set is the expected value of 2 times r. What do we do with that constant? We bring it outside the expectations operator, so that's 2 times the expected value of r. Expected value of r is 5, so 2 times r is expected value of r is 10. Here's the solution. What about the variance? Variance of set is the same as the variance of 2 times r. So we are in this world here. Variance of a factor times the random variable. We can bring that factor outside, but we need to square it. So that is equal to 2 squared times the variance of r and that means it's 4 times the variance of r is 3 and hence we get 12 here. So two, we created two new random variables q and z which were a function of a random variable for which we know its properties, okay, the expected value of variance and now we can calculate the expected value in the variance on the basis of knowing how these new random variables relate to R.